Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be diving into the world of AWS S3 service. So we will be looking at a set of common interview questions that you might ent encounter when uh, uh, discussing this S3 service uh, on the cloud. So whether you are getting up for an interview or just you are eager to expand your AWS knowledge, then you are in the right place. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's kick things off with uh, some basics. So if you are new to AWS, S3, it stands for Simple Storage Service and it's a versatile object storage solution which is designed for scalable and secure data storage. So uh, S3, it's a storage service that we have in AWS and uh, this mainly helps us with uh, uh, scalability and securely storing your data in the cloud. So we can use this service to store and retrieve any amount of data you want at any time from anywhere on the web. All right. So that's basically what your uh, S3 uh, is. Now let's uh, jump into our first question that we have for your S3. So the most basic question that you can expect here is what is Amazon S3? So like I said, Amazon S3, that's your object based storage that we have in AWS. So it's a service provided by AWS and we can use this to store and retrieve any amount of data we want in this service. Now this is mainly designed for uh, being highly scalable, highly durable and highly secure. So we can store any amount of data you want, you can secure the access and it is highly available. So it's durable as well. The next question we have is what are the different storage classes we have in Amazon S3? So Amazon S3 provides us with uh, different different storage options. So it offers us with standard this is the default. Then we have standard infrequently accessed. We have intelligent tiering, one zone infrequently accessed, Glacier, Glacier Deep Archive. Now all these options are available and designed for different different use cases based on the access frequency and the durability requirements. So based on how frequently you are going to access the data and based on the durability of the data, you can choose uh, the storage options you want. By default, your standard is what you get. The next question we have is how is data organized in Amazon S3? So how do we store the data in S3? Now, the data in S3 is organized into containers, which we call as buckets. So you will also see people calling them as S3 buckets. So these S3 buckets are simply the containers for the data that you want to store. And then within this bucket, we will have your data, which we call it as your object. So your S3 is an object based storage. So each data or the files that we store in this bucket, we refer to them as your objects and each of this bucket will have a globally unique name so that uh, um, you know we, uh, no one else will be able to use the same bucket name in a different AWS account. So that's how your data is organized in the S3 bucket. The next question we have is what is the maximum size of an object that uh, we can store in Amazon S3? Now the maximum size of an object that we can store in S3 is 5 terabytes. So this is for each object. So we can have multiples of this object. However, each object can be a maximum of 5 TB. That means I can have multiples of 5 TBs, but then each of this object is limited to a maximum of 5 terabytes. So 5 TB is the limit that we have for each object. The next question we have is, how can you control the access to your Amazon um, S3 buckets? Now, there are different different ways that we can control the access to your buckets. So we can make use of your bucket policies um, in your uh, S3 bucket. So if you have any buckets, like in my case, I already have few buckets. So let's say we'll go to this example bucket. And if you go to this permissions, uh, you can see you have your bucket policies. That's one way. Then you have uh, ACLs, which is your access control list. So um, you should be able to see another option, which is your ACLs. And uh, the other option you have is using the IAM service. So creating IAM policies, we can use that also to control the permissions, to control the access to your S3 bucket. The next question we have is what is versioning in Amazon S3 and why would you use it? 
Now by default uh, S3 does not have versioning enabled but if you enable this versioning it helps us to uh, keep multiple versions of your object so you now like like version 1 version 2 version 3 so if you want to maintain multiple versions of your data in the same bucket Amazon provides us with this versioning feature in the S3 bucket so again when you go to any respective S3 bucket and if you go to properties you should be able to see this bucket versioning option you can go ahead and enable this once you enable this any data that you upload to the s3 bucket will maintain version so the same data if you upload once again amazon will maintain a, a latest version for that as well so it helps you to maintain multiple versions of your data so this mainly helps in preserving your data retrieving the data at any point you want and then restoring every version of every object stored in a bucket so maybe you want to go back or you want to roll back to a previous version of your script or any data your versioning can be helpful in that scenario the next question we have is how does amazon s3 ensure the durability of your uh, data so amazon s3 provides you 99.99999 which is 11 nines of uh, durability now how does uh, amazon provide that now this mainly uh, what amazon does is it, it it provides this high availability by replicating your data across multiple devices and across multiple facilities within a region so we have something known as availability zones so whenever we upload a data to the s3 bucket uh, uh, amazon automatically replicates this data to multiple availability zones so that even if there is an issue with uh, one availability zone we still have the data available in a different availability zone and that's how the data is highly durable now in addition to that it also performs automatic uh, error checking correction of the data and it maintains checksums for all the data that we upload and that's how it does the error checking and correction of the data for us the next question we have is what is a pre-signed url in amazon s3 and how is it useful now pre-signed url can be used if you want to give uh, temporary access to any object so pre-signed url uh, is used to give an access to an s3 bucket but this will be a temporary access so it's a time bound access that we give to a s3 bucket now we do this uh, without exposing our credentials so it is generated using the aws security credentials and can be shared allowing temporary access to those objects without exposing your credentials so how do you do that um, you can go to your respective s3 bucket you can select your object under the actions you should be able to see this share with a pre-signed url when you click on that this is what you get so you can decide on minutes so how many minutes do you want this uh, um, object to be available so it's a temporary access that we give uh, so sometimes you know you might have seen the use case of this wherein we receive certain reports but it will be available only for like one day or two day or three days right so that's basically what your pre-signed url is so you can access that object for that particular duration after that duration has expired we no longer be able to access that data so that's basically what your pre-signed url is the next question we have is can you use amazon s3 to host a static website well yes we can make use of amazon s3 to uh, host a static website so what we can do is if you go to this uh, properties and if you scroll down to the bottom you should be able to see this static website hosting so we can have a html page uh, like a blog for example and you can start hosting it on the s3 bucket itself so by enabling static website hosting for a bucket you can use it to serve html pages or any css or any javascript and other static web content so the users can access your let's say a static website by using this s3 bucket so when we enable this s3 provides us with a url that we can share with the users and the users can start accessing your website the static website whatever we are hosting over here so we'll need to provide the index document and the error document and these objects will be available in the s3 bucket so whenever we hit the url the user will be accessing the object that is stored in the s3 bucket so that's how we can enable your static website hosting the next question we have is how can you transfer the data into and out of AW, um, amazon s3 so 
data we can transfer into and out of amazon s3 by using different different means so we can use the aws console we can use cli we can use sdks and we can also make use of your third party tools like for example if it's your console we can go to the respective buckets and uh, you should be able to see this upload option and if it's your cli we can run the cli commands you can make use of your sdks to write certain programs uh, so there are other options that are available so additionally uh, large scale data transfers can be optimized using amazon s3 transfer acceleration or aws snowball for offline data transfer so that's basically how uh, you can manage the transferring of your uh, data into and out of your uh, amazon s3 bucket so there you have it uh, folks so that's basically the 10 common interview questions uh, uh, we have for your um, uh, S3 um, interview. Now, remember when preparing for an interview, it's not just about memorizing these responses, but also understanding the uh, concepts. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more AWS and cloud related content. If you have specific topics or questions that you would like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comments uh, below. Until next time, happy cloud computing.